WFSB. This is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicole Nalepa. Today is Thursday, February 2nd. It is Groundhog Day, and we have all of your top stories. Starting you off in Weathersfield, where we've learned that a family has been displaced this morning after a fire ripped through their home right on Apple Hill. Crews tell us that the fire started in the garage just after midnight and quickly spread through the rest of the home, leaving behind just charred remains of the structure. Weathersfield fire crews responded at 1 a.m. and discovered that the family had escaped unharmed. But they needed backup from multiple towns to fight the flames. Now the Red Cross is helping the family out as officials continue to investigate a cause this morning. And in Meriden, police are investigating an overnight crash on 691. Our pinpoint news tracker shows you exactly where it happened. It was right by the exit 6 ramp. Now here's what we know so far. Meriden police have confirmed that they are investigating this morning, but we're still working to learn more about potential victims and injuries. So stay with us on air and on the Channel 3 app as we continue to keep you updated. Also, police in Plymouth this morning are still trying to piece together what caused a deadly ATV accident. We're told last night, just after 6, crews showed up to Hancock Court, which is just off of Route 262 and they received reports of a medical emergency. When they arrived there, they found a man in his 60s who had been legally riding his ATV on his property, and police say that he died on the scene. This morning, they are still trying to figure out what exactly happened. And staying in Plymouth, prosecutors have dropped charges against a group of school employees that failed to report suspected abuse of students. The case stemmed from the arrest of now ex-teacher James Eschert. He was accused of sexually abusing several students at Plymouth Center School. Police arrested four school employees for not reporting the allegations. We have learned two of those employees have since retired. One teacher will remain on administrative leave until further notice, and another teacher will be allowed to return to work. We are also working to learn more today about the relationship between two people who were found dead in a murder-suicide in Bethel. Police say a man identified as Lester Jones shot and killed Tracy Marie Jones and then killed himself. And this all happened Tuesday night, right inside of a home on Reservoir Street just before midnight. We're told police received a report of a disturbance and noise complaint. And when they showed up and went inside the home, that is when they discovered the gruesome scene. Officials are still investigating this morning, but we'll keep you updated as soon as we learn more. Scott? All right, thanks, Nicole. Hey, our Doppler's Drive, beautiful sunrise this morning. Get out there and get those cameras out. It is spectacular, but we are expecting a blast of cold air that's going to kind of put a damper on outdoor activities, especially Friday into Saturday. Our Doppler scans the state dry. Wind chill warning. This is serious business here, folks, for northern Connecticut. A wind chill advisory in effect for southern Connecticut. This is Friday into Saturday, and the further north you go, the worse it's going to get. The wind is going to be howling, and those temperatures are going to be dropping. Is that dramatic enough? I think so. Dangerous combination of Arctic cold and a gusty wind. Records could be broken. The worst again comes Friday evening and through Saturday morning as this blast of Arctic air makes its entrance into Connecticut. All right, now here's a wind chill, uh, excuse me, here's temperature. Uh, future cast tomorrow's weather today. Today we're fine. We're going to be moving into the mid to upper 30s, if not 40 degrees. But by very early Saturday morning, temperatures drop through the day tomorrow. And by very early Saturday morning, look at the numbers five below, eight below, nine below. Woo, that's brutal. Notice that five in Bridgeport. If we do get to that five, that'll tie a record a tire record in Bridgeport, and that actually goes a little bit lower, so we're just going to have to wait and see if we're going to break it. The record at uh, Bradley is eight below, and we'll show you that in just a second. In the meantime, here's the wind chill values. Look at this. Look at this map. Saturday morning, very early, 23, 25, 31 degrees below zero. That's that's means business. Pets inside, rabbits inside, livestock, plenty of hay. Make sure they have plenty of water. No pets, no people outside, okay? And here are the records. Eight below from 1965 at Bradley, five above in 1996. It looks like that Bridgeport record might just fall. Uh, Bradley, we're just going to have to wait and see. We've got a mixture of sun and clouds out there for you this morning. It's beautiful. The mess that is to our south stays there. We're not expecting any precipitation here in Connecticut, with the exception of a snow squall, very early tomorrow morning. That'll show you in coming up in just a second. Dry roads, you're good to go this morning. Get on the bus, get on the bus. Don't be late for the bus. 
Our temperatures today between 35 and 40, especially for the ride home under abundant sunny skies. Visibility at a perfect 10 this morning. And according to early morning future cast, tomorrow's weather today. Watch the skies just clear. It's a beautiful day of weather today. But tonight, unfortunately, we have a little bit of a snow shower, snow squall event taking place around 3 a.m. That quickly rolls through, and that's what's going to usher it. Whoa. Look at that. Woo! New Haven, 20 degrees with an, just an abundant sunny sky. All right, here are the temperatures out there right now, 15. It's cold. It's cold this morning. Bundle up. And just a 24-hour temperature change of 4 to 8 degrees cooler. Just a little bit of a breeze out there in parts of the state makes it feel even chillier. So, again, bundle up. Here are your headlines. A nice, quiet start, mostly sunny today, and then wicked cold Friday into Saturday. Not today, 35 to 40, a little bit above average. Sun was up at 7.03, sets a little after 5. Temperatures drop all day tomorrow. 16 on Saturday. That's in the afternoon and evening as the temperatures continue to rise. And Sunday, 41 degrees. Monday and Tuesday, it's back to spring-like temperatures. 706 is now the time. Nicole, back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. This morning, another school community is responding after a student brought a weapon to school. And this all comes after police in Granby say a fifth grader had a knife at Wells Road Intermediate School on Tuesday and was showing it to classmates. Fortunately, no one was hurt and the weapon was confiscated. And now the principal of the school released this statement, saying in part, quote, this student made a terrible mistake by bringing this item onto school grounds. I would also like to take this time to remind all parents to have a conversation with your students about bringing anything on school grounds that can be deemed as a danger to our school community. We are also learning new information this morning about the man accused of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from the town of Seymour. Police are calling this an elaborate phishing scam. Today, Charles Ukasanya of Gathersburg, Maryland, is in jail and charged with larceny. Investigators say that he successfully conned the town of Seymour out of nearly $400,000. Now, the first select woman posted on her Facebook page that a scammer reached out to a Board of Ed employee and successfully fished their credentials. And they ended up using that information to send fake money transfer requests to the town. Well, just a few changes to routing numbers, and by the time officials caught on, it was too late. The next step for officials include extraditing Ukasanya to Connecticut for his day in court. This morning, we've learned two people are dead after a head-on crash in Winchester. And this is a story we first brought to you as breaking news Tuesday night. Police tell us 84-year-old William O'Leary of Plymouth and a 16-year-old from New Hartford were both killed on Route 44, right by Coe Street. We're told another vehicle tried to pass a truck and ended up slamming into their car. The two people in the car that hit them were both hurt, but they are expected to be okay. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News. Remember, you can get news, weather, and any traffic updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day, everyone. We'll leave with, with this beautiful shot in Old Saybrook. Be healthy, stay positive, and have a great day.